It's now about 16 minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock. You're on the Now Morning Show. I'm Kimberly D'Souza. Now, according to a BBC report, more than 80 cases of monkeypox have been confirmed in at least 12 countries. The World Health Organization has said that another 50 suspected cases are being investigated and warned that more cases are likely to be reported. Now, while our local Ministry of Health has confirmed that there are no suspected cases of the virus locally, we wanted to talk to an expert about the disease. And with me, I have Professor Christopher Ora, who is a professor of veterinary virology at the School of Veterinary Medicine at the University of the West Indies. Now, Professor Ora is very qualified as he is a veter veterinary surgeon, has a PhD in viral immunopathology, and has many years research and experience working predominantly on vector-borne viral and protozoal diseases. Professor Ora, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on now. Good morning. Uh, no problem. Good morning, everybody. Now, Professor, first of all, what is monkeypox? <laughs> It, it's it's a it's a virus or it has been around for a long time so it's nothing new like um sars cov2 the virus that causes covid19 we've known about it i teach my uh, my uh, my lectures at the vet school i teach it in that so uh, that's the good news is we 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 know this virus pretty well um and and so we're we're pretty prepared uh, to deal with it although what we're seeing at the moment is probably the biggest outbreak outside Africa that we've, we've ever seen. Now, Professor, before I ask my uh, second question, I just want to warn our viewers that we're about to show some images of what monkeypox looks like. And for those who might be suffering from trypophobia, this might be a bit triggering. So just a warning for that, right? Now, Professor, as we move forward, I mean, what are the symptoms of monkeypox and how can we treat this? Yeah, so so I'd like to start off by saying the symptoms are usually much much milder than what you're seeing at the moment. Um, these are these are the more severe cases. Um, so so what happens if you if you catch it is is you start off with a couple of days when you feel a bit uh, a, a bit uh, you know not so not so well. You feel a bit um, uh, fatigued. Um, you get muscle ache, uh, back ache, uh, headache. Uh, those kind of things, you know, fairly nondescript type uh, symptoms that you get with many uh, uh, viral diseases. But then uh, after that, around three days after that, you, you, you start to get a rash. And that rash is slightly different to your usual rash um, in the fact that uh, they, they call it so it's very itchy and you get little uh, kind of get little bumps like you saw in some of the um, some of the videos. And those some of the pictures then those those bumps then um, uh, the, 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 they initially start with their fluid filled and one of the pictures showed it was fluid filled and then that bursts open and then you get what we call a pustule which where you get some some pus in it and it, and, and then that eventually forms into a scab. Um, so you get these sort of um, these spots, pustules, uh, scabs uh, over your body, uh, especially in certain places like the face and the feet and the uh, and the hands. But but um, you know I have to say those 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 pictures that we saw there are uh, the more severe end. Usually it's a it, it, it's a pretty mild disease and it uh, after a certain amount of time it just it, it disappears. Now, um, I'm hearing um, monkeypox, and I'm, I'm also thinking chickenpox. So is, is it a relation to chickenpox as well? It, it, it can look a little bit like chickenpox, but it's not the same virus at all as chickenpox. Um, these are, these are, it's called by a, caused by a pox virus, and, and every, every, anim, every animal or, or species in the world has its own pox virus, pretty much. Um, cows have it. Of course, uh, of course, we have smallpox, which is a very nasty disease. Um, and most of these um, m most of these pox viruses are what we call self-limiting, in that they do you do get better from them. But some of them are more likely to be what we call zoonotic, in other words, pass from the animal that it's in to humans. Um, and monkeypox is one of the ones that uh, can pass from animal species to humans. So, and it is also one of the ones that can, under certain circumstances, be more severe than the others. So we do have to keep a very close uh, uh, eye on it. Now, Professor Monkeypox, if you do have the symptoms, how is it treated? Is, is, is there a lotion that you can put on your skin or do you have to let the virus take its course? You basically, like with most viral diseases, you have to let the virus take its toll. 
obviously the critical thing here is if you do have symptoms uh, these kind of symptoms to, to seek medical help because you are infectious and this is this is not like covid 19 it's not like transmitted in the air when we breathe um it's it's, it's transmitted uh, by a very close you have to have very close contact and these lesions that you have that you've been seeing those lesions there's a, quite a lot of virus in those lesions so the the, the 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 best thing to do is if you do have these lesions is to make sure that you don't infect anybody else you can uh, put sort of you know calamine lotion on and, and 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 try to stop them itching of course but i'm afraid um as with most viral infections they have to they have to run their course so Professor, if you do in fact contract the monkeypox virus, then you should go into some sort of quarantine, especially when the lesions begin to open. Yes, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's important that that people understand that it can be it can be passed on, but it's a lot less easily transmitted um, than, for example, uh, COVID the, the COVID that we have at the moment or measles and things like that. So it's not so mu nothing. It's not so much to worry about. We have a lot of advantages about this particular virus that make it not so transmissible. So what's happened here is, is it's probably it's taken hold because it's a mild disease and it's infected quite a lot of people without us diagnosing us it without us actually confirming it. So that's why we're seeing so many cases now. But I'm confident that uh, once the medical authorities around in these countries where they have it, once they get to grip with it, grips with it, they start diagnosing it and they follow up what, what we call contact tracing. They follow up people that might have it and they then isolate those people and stop them transmitting it. I'm confident that they'll be able to stop it um, uh, and it won't. It's not it's not what we call we some viruses have what we say pandemic potential like like COVID. You know, it has the potential to become a really nasty pandemic. I don't think that but the, the monkey virus does because of the nature of how how difficult it is to transmit person to person. Now, where did this virus um, originate, Professor? Because I'm hearing that it's endemic to some uh, West African countries. Yeah, so this is a virus that we've uh, seen for many years. Uh, it it's usually occurs in tropical rainforests. It does occur in monkeys, but it does occur in other in other species as well, like um, like rodents, it occurs in squirrels as well, and things. So it's usually um, it's usually uh, confined to those areas. But there are frequent outbreaks in Africa, um, uh, and, and I'm afraid this is another advantage, another example of a, a virus that uh, has only really um, been thought about by the Western world uh, when it's come and infected people in the Western world. So this. This is a virus that you know that, that Africans in various countries have to deal with all the time, um, with limited health services, uh, and 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 that's why some of them probably do succumb to it and die of it because they don't get appropriate treatment for it. So, it it, it it's it, it it hopefully this will wake up the Western world to start um uh st start thinking more about how we can avoid this transmission, not only the transmission of this virus, not only in the Western world but also in Africa. So. Professor, should we be concerned that it's going to come to our shores? I mean, how how concerning is this? How possible is this? Well, it's, there's always a possibility, but I think we have to be. Uh, I, I'm I'm not. I'm, I wouldn't be very concerned at the moment. Uh, we have to watch this virus carefully because it is, as you said, in uh, in uh, affecting people in in quite a few different countries. But that's still a relatively small amount of people worldwide. Um, so. Um, and also the fact that, as I said, it's it's not transmitted very easily. So I think it's very unlikely, um, although it is possible that it will come to Trinidad. If it did come to Trinidad, the important thing is to catch it uh, as early as possible and isolate it, because uh, um, that would stop it from being transmitted uh, to anybody else. And how many cases um, have been reported globally? Do you do you have a figure for us? I, I'm 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 not sure about the, the update, but I think there's been um, I think it's it's now a, a, almost double figures of countries. Um, so and there's been and and, and UK is probably um, uh, the most. Um, so the problem is it seems to be getting into in, into certain groups. Um, uh, so homosexuals, uh, uh, gay men seem to be uh, people that are coming uh, are coming to sexual health clinics and they have the virus. 
Um, so th that would indicate that it's passing cl by close direct contact within that group, within that group of people. Um, so we can, like when we do all type of risk assessments, we can look to see um, which type of people are, 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 or, 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 or people who car carry out certain practices, if they're most at risk, then we can target them um, for, for the surveillance. Um, and, and I think, as I said earlier, because of the nature of the transmissibility of this virus, health systems around the world should get on top of this. Um, although, you know, we have to obviously, we've been surprised before. We were surprised with, 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 uh, with, with, uh, with COVID, for example. But at least we know this virus. We know how to control it. Um, if necessary, we, can, we have a vaccine already for it, for it because we can use the original smallpox vaccine, which, which, which um, um, protects against it. Um, so we have things in our armory uh, that we know are able to control it. Um, so that's why we're not, uh, as, a, you know, as a scientific community, we're not so worried about it, although we need to obviously you know, put, in, put, put, put everything in place. Now, in terms of the efficacy of the um, of the vaccine, because I know our Minister of Health locally, he was thinking of sourcing a vaccine, J-Y-N-N-E-O-S, um, to treat with the, 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 with the monkeypox disease. If it does come to our shores, how effective will it be in either uh, preventing the vaccine or, I'm sorry, um, dealing with the disease or either preventing yeah. the disease from spreading? It, it, it's pretty good this vaccine um it's the it's the old it's it's the it's the vaccine that some old people like me uh, have already had because um we, we it was the it's the vaccine that was used for smallpox um so up to about uh, 19 uh, i think it was 1990 or something um uh, people were vaccinated against it were using that vaccine and a, a Apparently, it's about 85% protective um, against monkeypox. So, you know, that's pretty good. Um, that means that um, the vast majority of people will, will, would be protected if they had the vaccine. And finally, I mean, there is, I mean, this has been endemic to the West African countries, but in the Western world, we're now kind of seeing it coming on. I mean, what is the reason for this sort of frenzy? Sorry, what was the last bit of the question? I'm, I'm just wondering, what is the reason for this sort of frenzy? It has been endemic in, in the yeah. African countries for a while, and now we in the yeah. Western world are now learning about it, and there's this big kind of, you know, like fright. I mean, what's the reason for that? It, it, this always happens. Uh, remember Ebola. Um, uh, when uh, Ebola is, was, was spreading in Africa for, for many, many years and killing people, and immediately it, it, when it came out of Africa, you know, a few years back, and started affecting just a few people in the Western world, everybody started panicking. And then it galvanized the Western world to then produce a vaccine, um, which is now being used across the world, an effective vaccine. So this really does is a is a, is a poor is a so is a social indictment of society um that that we're only we're only uh we only start worrying about these particular viruses uh, when they actually come and affect us in the western world and that's awful because we should be looking to um to to to, to control these viral diseases at source in the countries where they are and support um, people in those countries so they don't suffer from them and this is it's crazy that the fact that every time one of these viruses comes out into the west there's all this all this um furora um we should be we should be working much closely with these viruses at source all the time and supporting uh in africa and finding vaccines and finding effective treatments um and actually using them in the in the countries in africa where where these diseases are and then we won't get them because they're treated in the country of course professor ura we're unfortunately out of time but thank you so much for joining us here on now and just sharing a bit about monkeypox and how it can be treated and of course what symptoms we can look out for thank you so much no problem and that was Professor Christopher Uro, who is a professor in veterinary biology at the University of the West Indies. Rokas, monkeypox. Monkeypox, yes. <laughs> monkeypox. Now, I mean, I mentioned earlier, was it this week or was it last week, when, I, when we first started talking about monkeypox, I told you where it was spreading and with whom. You didn't believe me. 
No, the professor said you believe the professor? Because he's the professor. Wow. <laughs> wow. This, this goes back to the conversation we had about the um, about education. Professor would have gone to school. He would have done his research. He would have done everything. He's a professor. And he gave the same information that I gave. And which is why we brought the professor for his expert opinion, <laughs> not the hearsay <laughs> and what you may have Mom, read. I would have, I would have right? read it from a, from a credible news source, but which is why I brought it. But did you cite your source? I said BBC. Did you say BBC? You, yeah. Okay, probably. But you don't listen to probably. me. Because <laughs> he was too busy doubting. But no, 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 doubting. I no, had only doubting right. some of I mean, For me, for me what, one of the most important things about what the professor said just now was that we don't care until it gets yes, here. Yes, yes, true. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, And we've seen that it happened with COVID-19. Ebola, he we mentioned had, Ebola. We had yes. while, while in China, COVID was going on. No, no, no. <laughs> We have we was palancing myself on the streets yeah. of Port of Spain, yeah. Carnival 2020. Meanwhile, the rest of the world is worrying about COVID 19. Yeah, yeah, and it's only when and I actually remember Ebola and doing some research on Ebola and being like, wait, but this is in Africa. It's been in Africa. It's been in Africa, and they've been dealing with it. And I think what he spoke about as well is so important. We need to early on partner with these countries and find ways to mitigate against the spread when it happens. But there's also things to consider. I agree. I agree. 100 yeah. percent. That we should but then there's geopolitics to consider because not all the time would some of these countries be willing to partner with other countries to be able to accept vaccines or donations towards vaccines for fear of what the return might be as in what they might have to give in order to get those things can't we all just get along we probably can but unfortunately we don't so we're gonna take a quick break <laughs> when we come back we have shamna joining us it's tuesday so that means we have unique not different stay tuned